Technomancer for zero point fuel. Uh, it's been a while since I posted a video. I wanted to give you guys a quick update on where we're at. Um, the original VMG is pretty much toast. It's been disassembled. Uh, we rebuilt a larger motor, which is the heart of is an induction generator. It's a three horsepower polyphase uh, motor. Um, three phase motor. Uh, we wired it up. There's two banks of um, 44 amp hour telecom batteries. There's eight of them. Uh, right now they're only being charged. They're not driving the device. We're doing experiments so it's easier. So right now I'm bleeding off some energy which not dropping very fast but you can see the amp draw is about 10 amps. It's about 7 actually. So I'm trying to bleed off a little energy here so I can run her at high speed for you. And this motor is different than any of the other motors that we've had in the past because the trigger voltage, let me uh, open her up for you here. Um, the trigger voltage is um, 2.7K. So the resistive level of the trigger is a lot greater than any of the other motors uh, which allows us to run the up to 120 volts uh, rectified DC into the pulse motor um, and by using a variac we're able to um, control the trigger control the speed of the wheel by adjusting the voltage as opposed to adjusting the resistance of the trigger so that's uh, a new way of doing it for us anyway um, every coil that I can show you here every coil on the motor has its own trigger so each coil has its own trigger point and they are in sequence so when they fire they fire sequentially as they move past one the next one fires and they're progressive so the the push is more constant as opposed to a pulse with the original VMG where the circuit only pulsed once uh, each one of these pulse separately so it's a continuous pulsed circuit the wheel is 25 inches um, which gives you a mechanical advantage from the smaller wheel you know the smaller wheel you would wouldn't have this mechanical advantage you have by the wheel being this large basically like using a wrench this long to add torque we're using transformer laminar plates to drive the the coil as opposed to welding rods or in some cases we used uh, coat hangers so the laminar plates is smaller it's easier to deal with it's easy to find you can cut them out of transformers for microwave ovens and allows you to, the ability to uh, build it with common materials and in this case we've got the wheel this is a test wheel so we plan on replacing it with a plastic or even a steel wheel but right now it's uh, it's wood but it's fairly balanced as you can see um, it kind of looks wobbly but it's only because we have stainless steel banding around it and I cut notches in the banding to hold the magnet. The strap is basically a keep and every place you see the red there's a magnet so um, what that does is uh, the smaller motor for that to trigger that many times the wheel would have to be running about 3000 rpm and this could be running at 400 rpm and we get a lot more triggers 
So if any of you have done the experiments with the larger bicycle wheel, you, you know what I'm talking about. So the coils are unique. They have laminar plates, a little piece of uh, polycarbonate on the ends, and that's taped over to create the, the, the curve to allow me to wrap the coil, but that also acts as a hold for to hold the plates together and to hold the the polycarbonate sheeting together by screw putting these little screws on the ends. So let me show you one here. As you can see what it is is there's a piece of polycarbonate wrapped over the laminar plates. Sorry it's dirty but um, and then the coils wrapped around this part here. And this is the new design. This is everything self-contained. So this is the next stage for this motor. Um, is everything? The whole circuitry is contained within the coil. So you only have three wires. You got a hot, a positive, and a return. No trigger off the thing. The trigger triggers are actually put in these last two as a loop so you can change the trigger voltage so that's the new new design right there I'll be releasing a paper on it where I have designed this whole thing in 3D so this will be the first release here so you can see the wheel is uh, fairly large so at 25 inches uh, that thing gets going, it's creating significant mechanical uh, energy. So, right now, the, because the coils are really small, they're tri filers. Actually, these are tri filers, these are bi file coils with a trigger wire. So, uh, at 2 amps, I can get the wheel going about 400, 450 RPM. Only drawing 2 amps. So,. Uh, I'm trying to do a little more experimenting with this trying to do a little more experimenting with this design before I tear it all apart and put on the new coils. So I'm trying to drain this down. You can see it's really not moving very fast. So um, the motor's been running constantly for about three days. And the batteries when I started this experiment they were at right around 11 volts 11.5 volts some of them so they were all hooked in parallel and in three days the amperage shot right up to 13 volts so which at running at 2 amps the pulse motor is running at about 15 volts into the batteries at 2, two amps so um, I'm going to get started here and give you a quick look Thank you. 